Art salute to you all out there, and welcome back to Summer Shenanigans Season 5. And in today's episode, uh, this should be going out on the 4th of July, and so I thought, what better way to celebrate Independence Day than to run away from America to go to Canada, because America is now infested by zombies. Welcome to Death Road to Canada. If you've never heard of this game, it's a really, really good indie game. Um, uh, like I just said about America being infested by zombies and you're trying to go from America to Canada. So it's basically Oregon Trail if it took place in the present day and it was instead of going from Oregon to, or from, I can't even remember like what, Mississippi to Oregon or whatever, I, instead you're going from Florida to Canada. Uh, but it's super fun. Uh, and I actually ended up getting it on the Switch. It was a, it was a limited run games by limited run games. Uh, and so I actually ended up picking it up. And so now I have it on the Switch. So we are going to do a new game. Uh, and I'm, yeah, let's still use this. Okay, goodbye. Um, I might be making this into like a small mini series for, uh, for Summer Shenanigans, depending on how well this episode goes. Um, if, like, I, uh, if I do end up surviving this entire episode, yes, I will continue. I'm not going to leave you guys on a cliffhanger for me going through Death Road to Canada. But, without further ado, let's get started. Um, let's see. I don't, let's see. Because I have, like, all these characters. I have all, like, my friends, my dad down here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do me as, uh, as the leader, and then we'll do a random person, let me just, Brandon and Brandon, I like that, all right, cool, we're going to do that, and then game mode, I've won on rare character mode, but I think I'm gonna play on normal mode, yeah, we'll play on normal mode, just to kind of get things going. Brendan hears rumors that Canada is a safe place, free of the threat of zombies. With nothing to gain from waiting around Florida, he decides to brave the death road and travel north. Dog barking horns, gunshots, yeah, that's just like tips for what happens. Uncle Sam appears! Oh, this is perfect! He's living personification of America, which ceased existing years ago. You feel vaguely more patriotic, but not really. Time to escape the zombie wasteland. Let's, let's have Uncle Sam join us. I didn't know that they did, uh... And they did events uh, other than the Canada Day one. So yeah, I guess this is the Independence Day uh, event. So now we have Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam is dying. What happened? Uh, all right. Um, all right. To start the journey, the group decides to grab some supplies from a nearby location. In order to survive the death road, you'll need to hoard as many supplies as you can. You will also need to find ways to train and grow your team. Uh, I think Yalmart is the best way to go here. So I think I'm going to go to Yalmart. All right, the group spots an abandoned Yalmart off in the distance. Looks like it's been looted, but maybe there's still some untouched loot inside. Zombie forecast, mild, sluggish, and near, near noon. Let's go bargain hunting. Uncle Sam, uh, why are you dying? We'll give you a flashlight just to, uh, you know, so you can protect yourself. I gotta remember how to play. It's been a little bit. All right, cool. Got it. <laughs> uh, and then, got it. Okay. So I know how to play again. I already found some ammo, some food. Yeah, by the way, these are, uh, like, I have beaten this game once, but that run took four hours. So, um, I'm not going to be able to beat this in one episode. Am I going to die in one episode? Potentially. Uh, this game is very hard, uh, but super fun. So... Uh, I'd be totally down to make this like a little mini series to um to kind of you know just have a little run where we make our way to Canada during the summer try and get away from zombie invasions I think that would be super fun so that's what we're gonna do uh we're just ah there's so much crap on the ground what the heck uh ooh there's an ha <laughs> zombie slipped on the on the poo poo uh, okay, I think there's a bat right there. I'm gonna go pick that up. Move these carts out of the way. Eh. Got the bat. This bat is probably gonna break really, really soon. I don't think there, wow, is there really not anything on the shelves? Ooh, that's not good. 
Uh, normally, Yolmarts are a lot more stocked than this, but uh, I guess we're kind of kind of crap out of luck for that. But uh, I mean, that's a decent start. Uh, got some food. We also started with three people, which is unusual for uh, for a Death Road to Canada run. But uh, let's get out of here. Unusual for a uh, normal Death Road to Canada run, but I like it. Four food, 36 gas, three medical supplies, and 16 pistol ammo. It's the only time to camp, but there has been a lot of signs of bandits today. Someone needs to, to be awake in case of an attack. Who should stay up on watch? You know what? We're going to make Uncle Sam stay up on watch because uh, the person who... Oh, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam stands guards for the night. He ignores the task and falls asleep almost instantly. The next morning, a bunch of supplies are missing. Lost eight pistol ammo, three food, and all the gas that we literally just got. Uh, my morale somehow increased, though, because of the meal that we ate. Uh, we are already running low on food. Bless these stars and stripes, says Uncle Sam. The group siphons gas from some abandoned vehicles and then spots a magazine in one of the cars. It's an issue of prepared preppers, a special edition in mint condition. Who gets to read it? Uh, share with everyone. Everyone passes around the magazine, reading what articles appear to them. Like always, eventually someone gets peanut butter stains all over the mag, to the point where it becomes unreadable. My shooting increases, Brandon's mechanical increases to almost the best, and Uncle Sam's shooting increases, and we got gas, too. Uh, we are running out of food, which is going to be a situation. Uh, okay, uh, either a sporting goods store or a coffee shop. I think coffee shop should have more food, which is what we need right now, so we're gonna go to the coffee shop. All right, let's get a move on. Apocalypse Coffee. Out of my sight. Uh, let's see if I was right in assuming that this place would have more food. I might have been wrong. Wait, what is this? The enormous and complex coffee machine was built to survive a few dr uh, few different kinds of end of the world scenarios. This was a big part of the coffee shop's marketing campaign. Truth in advertising and it, uh, it still works. Brendan gets some coffee. We'll leave it alone. You know what? I've never seen this before. Let's get some coffee. Brendan sprays some coffee into an old cup lying around and then drinks it. He feels all coffeeed up. Am I faster now? Yeah, I'm faster now. Cool. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. So I guess it's just... Hold on. Uh, let me try something. Can we all get coffeeed up? Uh, ooh, wait. He can mess with the settings and his mechanical just increased. Let's try that. Brandon uses all... Oh! Brandon is a her. Okay. Brandon uses her, all her mechanical skills to figure out what she, uh, what the many, many buttons on the coffee brewer do. She makes the perfect cup of coffee. It's delicious. The coffee machine sparks, emits smoke, and dies. Brandon's dexterity increases. Okay. Oh, oh and uh, Brandon is faster as well. This is good. This is good because we can now evade zombies at mock speeds. Uh, I'm going to use my bat until it breaks because I know this bat is going to break at some point. Is that all? Or can we go into another building? Because I kind of came here for food. And the fact that I didn't get food is kind of upsetting. Uh, we're going to grab this nail board. Now I feel like I'm on coffee because now I have to talk. I feel like I have to talk faster. But that's not the case because I'm on coffee. I do have a Mountain Dew Code Red as the drink of choice for today's episode. Uh, I, I don't know why I started that as a trend, but I'm going to continue doing it. As long as I have a drink, I'm going to be telling you what it is, regardless of what it is. But, yeah. Uh, I'm just kind of going through. Yeah, wow, this coffee was uh, super beneficial, because we are flying. <laughs> Alright, cool. We have another building we can go through. I'm not finding too much. A food. Pistol ammo. Not a lot of zombies in here, which is good. We don't need zombies to be... Uh, shotgun ammo, more food. We need a lot more food. Okay, nothing in here. No, no, no. Uh, four shotgun ammo, seven rifle ammo. I thought that was an openable thing. It is not... All right, we need to probably get out of here at some point. Why was that shaking? That was weird. <laughs> Medical supplies. This is a big house. All right, cool. Uh, not as much food as I would have liked. Oh, this is amazing. I love the coffee. Oh, wait. Oh, that was another building we could have gone through. Oh, well. 
Let's get out of here. Two food, one me uh, one medical, and a bunch of ammo. Cool. Uncle Sam is still dying. We really need to be careful with our supply of gas. Uh, we have 127 gas. Oh, God. The group camps for the night on a quiet uh, stretch of the road. The group is low on food and eats less. In the morning, there's a moose outside of the camp. It looks injured. It is just glaring at the group. Even injured, a moose is a really powerful creature. Probably best not to mess with it. Uh, treats the injury is a medical check. Wow. But you don't have very good medical. You've got a wow. <laughs> I love this. Brandon was really well suited for the post-apocalypse, mostly due to being a jerk. Uh, I don't know what my shooting is, but we could find out now. I know I wouldn't be able to wrestle the moose. I don't think I'm uh, strong enough for that because I think it's a strength check. Uh, let's try shooting the moose. Mistakes were made. The group finds an isolated car garage. The sign says Master Tuners. They find some gas and a lot of spare parts in, in, in good condition. Let's do car repair and tune up. Uh, Brandon tries to repair the car in the hope that it gets a little further before breaking down. She expertly repairs the car in no time at all. The car runs like new. The car looks undamaged. Cool. So I think that just... Yeah, that just fixed everything. Cool. Uh... That was really bad, but hey, at least we got Uncle Sam out of the party. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, Trader Camp is basically like a shop of sorts. I'm not gonna be able to do a lot with this. Uh, the group sees a gruff man near an ice cream truck. The words ice cream have been crossed off and the sign and it's signed shotgun shells is written. Okay, so we have shotgun shells for food. That's an egg. Oh, I should have put under oh, mine. All right, I have an egg now. I'm gonna hold on to that because I feel like uh, there's a spatula, there's a knife, there's a walking dog. Okay, three food, which is good for the two of us. Let's see what this walking dog has to say. Uh, the group finds the dog surrounded by a bunch of ammo. The dog speaks, Welcome to Ammo Emporium. Everything must go. Uh, it offers five bullets, four rifle ammo, and three shotgun shells per food item. Uh, no thanks. Lots of dogs. Like, I know I'm not going to be able to buy anything, but it, it never hurts to, like, actually talk to people to see if you can actually uh, do something about it. The group finds a man selling a bunch of firearms. He's holding a minigun that has a scope, a laser sight, and a flashlight attached to it. However, his selection seems pretty common stuff, so you have two food left. Uh, uh, a gun might be worth it, but I don't want to waste any of our food because we are running low. The group sees a woman standing near a stockpile of crates. The crates seem to contain a large amount of food and drink. I got food. I'm looking for some great weapons. Take a look at what I have, and it's not like anything. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to leave because we need to preserve our food. Uh, there we go. Okay, sorry. All right. Uh, we don't have enough medical supplies to heal everybody, but that's okay, because two health with this coffee upgrade. The group comes across a house on the by the road. It's locked. While trying to smash the door down, a voice calls out, Hey! Leave my door alone, you dinks! Dinks. Uh, try to recruit, or Brandon says, I'm not a dink. I've never seen this before, but I'm gonna go with, I'm not a dink. You're especially, <laughs> you're an especially huge dink, you dink! Brandon is infuriated and smashes on the door for a while. The group ends up leaving shortly after. Composure decreases, attitude decreases. Okay, good to know. That was not a good choice. Oh, this is not gonna be good. All right, um, sieges are never fun. We'll do, we'll put, here you can have, I want my hatchet back. You can have my nail board. Uh, I think that's the best we're gonna be able to do. Got some food. Let's see what this egg does. We got a chicken! Alright, so it's even worse because it's inside a house. So this is really gonna suck. But now we got a chicken fighter with us. <laughs> Who knows how long that's gonna last. Share. 
We just gotta survive for, I didn't see how long it was. Oh, did we run out of coffee? Was that coffee only for that coffee shop round? I can't tell. I think Brandon still has it. Oh, we're both getting tired. <clears throat> eh. Right, we just gotta survive. We can kinda keep a clear path. So we can actually exit once the sea gems. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay. Let's get out, let's get out, let's get out, let's get out. That was an easy siege. Uh, yes, let's go. We got one food. Lose more gas. The group feels inspired after managing to survive that situation. They feel like they're getting the hang of this. Choose a reward for the group. Uh, we probably need the morale and random skill gains when we're going for that. Uh, morale increases stre my strength and Brandon's shooting. But it's not revealed yet. So that after an extra long drive, the group scouts out a camping spot and falls asleep immediately after. The group eats a decent meal, and now we need more food. What a shame. The group runs into a herd of zombies. They're completely docile, just watching, uh, just waiting outside of a shop in a big single file line. Every zombie is staring straight ahead. You can send someone to join the line to solve this mystery. It would, it looks like it would, uh, it could be a long wait, which I think is a composure check, which I don't know mine, and Brandon's is pretty good, so we'll do Brandon, she can do that. Oh, heck yeah! Brandon patiently waits in the long line. It moves forward pretty slowly, but she calmly waits it out. The shop is a trendy, upscale grocery store. Most of the fancier items have rotted to mush, but there's still some loot. Get food plus nine and medical plus six, but the day wasted, the group has set, uh, set up camp and eats a decent meal, so we literally only got two food. Oh, wait, never mind. We got, uh, five food out of that. Bringing, uh, being prepared is one of the most important parts of survival. Uh, ooh, while driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. Either a crowded mall, wall, y'all mart, mall rescue, or drive around for more gas. And that mall rescue is a harder version. You know what? Screw it. We'll do it. If we die here, we die here. Uh, it was a rescue mission, so we're just trying to save people. Let's go. Oh, this was, this is... Well, bam! All right, this was smart. Uh, we need to save that rifle though. But we do need to try and save whoever is here. There's a rusty ma 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 machete, machete, right there. Uh, we're getting a lot of food too. I'm only gonna use that gun if we are in a pinch. I think they are locked in here. Okay, maybe not. Nope, nope. Oh, shoot. Uh oh. Ah, uh, well, I died. Guess we're taking control of Brandon. We're just gonna kinda let that sort out for a bit. Oh, Alright, well, I'm dead, so. But you know what? That's okay, because if, if Brandon dies, then you know what? That was a good episode. Uh, I kinda got to show you guys what this is about, and let's me kind of give you a chance to say if you want to see more on this channel, uh, for, where is this person? What? Who am I rescuing? What was the point of this? I'm so confused. All right, well, we're just gonna keep going on alone with Brandon. Maybe we should just ignore the next city. I think we have enough supplies already. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's just another day on the on the death road when someone farts in the car. Who could have done this? You may never know. We get a gas for it. <laughs> One unit of gas. If we could get solar panels and a couple batteries, it could come in handy. Whoa, it's Caitlin. This is one of my friends. It's nice to see a familiar face. She was sleeping in an abandoned house. She is slightly irritated to have been woken up. Fierce tempered friend of dog. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll, we'll recruit Caitlin. Could we slow down a little? Could you shut up a little? Oh my god, Caitlin! <laughs> oh my gosh. At the end of the day, the group hides in a drafty old house, and zombies roam around uh, roam around outside, and the doors of the house are barely on their hinges. Could should someone barricade the house? I want to say that's a mechanical check. 
So I think I'll make Brandon do that. Brandon barricades the clumpy house. She quickly reinforces problem spots. They now seem very secure. The group eats a decent meal. I freaking hate Mondays. <laughs> the group is driving down. We have three food. We'll visit the trader camp just because there might be good stuff here. Hello, horse man. The group meets a strange, menacing figure. He or she is wearing a mask and a robe. I sell axes. Just axes. And just a hatchet for three food. There's another dog selling us stuff. Darren is hanging around the camp, tame, but with no one to follow. He must have been abandoned here. Uh, ugh. Caitlin could potentially recruit the dog. I don't know if I want to do that quite yet. Uh, for 65 gas, no, man, I'm not trading you 50 for two units of food. I'm not that desperate. Oh, uh, gosh. This is not... It's been an okay run. It was good at the start and then <clears throat> afterwards... Uh, the group finds a woman surrounded by medical equipment. She claims to be a skilled doctor. She offers to provide healthcare in exchange for food. We have three food left. That's not enough food to afford treatment. But Brandon can try and try? Brandon convinces the doctor to offer her services for free. She's just that charming. Brandon gets a checkup, but there's nothing wrong with her. Well, that was pointless. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna recruit the dog because we don't have a lot of food. So it's not really gonna be worth it. Because a dog, while it only consumes one food, uh, would not be worth it. Oh, the car's dying. That's not good. Oh, uh, what are we? Oh, God! <laughs> We're at... Oh, the engine's dying. Oh, Swarmed Arcade or Factory Rescue. Well, we know how our rescue's got, so let's go Swarmed Arcade. Why not? Uh, the group spots an arcade. The dead, the dead completely swarm the inside of it. It's probably a bad idea to go in there, or is it? At least bring someone in to watch your back. Uh, very thick, calm, late afternoon. Video games! Uh, what does Caitlyn have? Just the knife? Just the knife. Alright, cool. Oh, boy. Uh, can we actually wait? Is there actually a get, uh, system that we can play in here? I feel like there is. We're we about to find out. I think it's in the back. Yep, I think sure enough that one in the center is playable. Brandon finds an unbroken prize machine. You, uh, you've used... Uh, you used to put in a quarter and get something. Now it's more convenient to just smash it. Uh, smash it open. Brandon smashes open the prize machine. One of the figurines in the capsules was an ultra rare limited edition. Whoa, it's very inspiring. Okay, I don't know what the point of that was. Oh, wait, there's another room. <gasps> wait, ooh, what's that? The arcade machine seems to be working. It's not very clear how it can run without electricity. With no one trustworthy nearby to watch out for zombies playing it could be dangerous. Uh, ooh, I wonder what dismantling it does. Let's find out. Brandon starts taking the arcade machine apart to see how it runs. After some quick rooting around, she figures out the reason. Turns out all these old arcade machines are gas-powered. Brandon carefully drains the gas out of the compartment. Oh, we get six to gas for that. All right, not too bad. There's a vending machine in the back. Oh, there's a couple. Uh, a couple with actual food in them. So we got five food for that. That's pretty nice. Uh, can we actually still play? No, we cannot. Okay, I think it should turn off. If we... Ah, okay. Uh, we need to leave. Yeah, let's leave. Okay. Bandits appear, all wearing sweatbands and all super buff. Even their dog. They demand protein powder. They will also accept the remainder of your food and a quarter of your ammo or medical supplies. We can either give them to the bandits demands. Caitlyn challenges them to oppose off and refuse to fight. This seems really funny to me, so I'm going to do that. Caitlyn challenges the bandits to oppose off. She is nowhere near the muscle mass of the bandits. She loses the pose off almost instantly. The bandits take a lot of extra supplies, even the ones they don't need, to teach the group a lesson about the weak challenge in this wall. We lost all of our... Wow, we lost a lot of stuff. Uh... I think we're going to go for one more event, and I think we're going to call it there. The group sets up a camp outside a grocery store. They notice another group has been following them and will probably attempt to loot the place. Send one person in to loot. Uh, probably Brandon, because Brandon seems like the best uh, person so far. Caitlin stands guard outside for the looters, so Brandon searches the grocery store. Brandon brings back some food. Exactly what we needed. And I think that's where we're going to call it for this episode. Uh... If you guys do, in fact, want to see more Death Road to Canada, I'm probably not going to do another episode uh, of it for a while. But 
And, and I mean, if you want to see more uh, of this, leave a like. I will probably do more for Summer Shenanigans, and maybe I'll even just do some occasionally for the channel uh, just whenever I want to, uh, just depending on how this episode does. Uh, other than that, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe if you have not, and don't forget to ring the bell to get notifications of when I upload next, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Ah, uh, bye.